Hi there. Solar dyeing is an easy way to dye wool yarn. I suggest starting with wool because wool takes on pigment from natural dyes more intensely and vibrantly than other fibers. Typically plant fibers will have a lighter tone of the pigment than the wool will pick up because it's a pro wool is protein fiber so it will absorb more of the color from the natural dye. Today I will be showing how to solar dye using hibiscus petals, cochineal, osage orange, and matter root. And these I have all gotten most of these from Dharma Training Company and then hibiscus you can get in bulk as like a tea or in tea bags. Check the description below for all of the tools and materials I'm using. I'm going to dive right in so look there for all the information on the tools and materials you will need. The first step to preparing your fiber is to create yarn bundles. I have a cone of wool yarn here and I'll use the Nitty Naughty to create a skein of yarn. And you can check out here where I show how to use a nitty knotty to create a skein of yarn. Once you've done that, then you will take your fiber, your wool, yarn, whatever type of um, product you're using, whether that's yarn or wool, fiber, wool roving, um, and then you're going to scour it. And I use a Synthropol detergent. I got this from Dharma Trading Company. And you're going to put uh, an amount of Synthropol into a pot of water and then scour your fiber in that pot. And here's a video on how to do scouring for more information on that. After you've done the scouring, then you're going to do some mordantine, and that is preparing the fiber to take on the pigment of the dyes. And I'm using an alum and cream of tartar combination for my mordantine. My weight of fiber, I calculated out in ounces, and then off of that weight of fiber, I did 10% of alum and 7% of cream of tartar. And I'll put more information in the description below on how to do that. You allow that to come to 180 degrees in the pot of water, and then hold that temperature for 45 minutes. If you're going to go straight to your solar dyeing, you can pull the fibers out of the pot from the mordantine bath and put them straight into your jar to start the solar dyeing. If you're going to be doing it in a few days, you can allow them to sit in the pot of, of the alum bath for three to five days before you need to use them before they'll start to break down in the mordant. Okay, I have my pot of yarn bundles that I created and the wool fiber, and I'm going to be removing this as I create my baths for the solar dyeing. So set this aside until you're ready to use it. I highly suggest using a dust mask and a pair of rubber gloves or latex gloves, some sort of hand protection, because when you are using the natural fibers, they do have pigments that will rub onto your hands and you don't wanna be breathing the particles into your lungs. So having a dust mask for when you're working with this material is highly recommended. I will be doing my solar dyeing in mason jars and I have a collection of wide mouth and narrow mouth jars as well as a recycled peanut butter jar. If you want to collect jars, you can use jars that you get from from your groceries that you can clean out and recycle for dyeing. It's a great use to reuse things. So. I have my mason jar and I'm going to be putting in some fiber into this jar and then adding the, the dye material and some water. But I'm going to start by adding dye material into the bottom and then put the, the fiber material in in layers and pack dye material in as I go. So I'll sprinkle, start with the hibiscus. I'm gonna crush this up a little bit in my hands just break up the petals a little bit and then sprinkle these into the bottom. And I'm just doing a thin layer here. And for the hibiscus petals, you don't need to wear your mask or your gloves because these are just dried petals. Okay, and then I'm going to lift out a skein of yarn here out of my alum bath. Okay, so lift out a bundle of yarn and squeeze out the excess liquid here. And this you can do with gloves so that you're not mixing your hands in the alum bath. Okay, so then I'm going to place some of this into the jar and then sprinkle in some more petals and then place more and then top it off with the rest of the petals I have. And I don't have a ton of these petals, so we'll see the outcome here. Now top it off with some water. I'm going to pour in water 
to cover like so. And you want enough that your fiber is completely covered and settled into the, into the water so that there's nothing uh, above the water level. And then close this with, your, with a lid of some sort. This I just have my mason jar lid. And now we'll set this aside until we're done with the others and we'll place this somewhere in a sunny window or out on the porch in a high sun area and the sun will do the dyeing for us. Okay, so now I'm going to start using the cochineal matter and osage orange. So I'm going to put on my gloves and my dust mask. Using the Osage orange, I'm going to sprinkle a little bit. This is a type of wood and these are wood chips, little tiny wood flecks here. So I'm going to sprinkle some of these into the bottom of my jar, just like we did with the hibiscus petals. This I'm going to go a little bit more concentrated than I did with the hibiscus petals because I have more of it. Okay, so another skein of yarn and I'm going to do a skein of yarn as well as a piece of roving. For this guy. So gently lift out your roving and squeeze out excess water. You don't want to add too much friction because you don't want to felt it. So I'm just lifting it out and I'm using merino wool roving and I'll set this in as well and then sprinkle in some more of the Osage orange. Just adding bits over the fiber. And then again, top this off with a layer of water. Next up, I'm going to do cochineal. And then cover this one with water. And you can already see the color starting to extract from the dye material as we pour in the hot water. In my last jar, I'll be using matter root and this matter root is a rough powder. So I'll just be pretty conservative with how much I put in because this ends up being a dark color. It's very potent dye. But I do want it to be a rich deep red. So I'm gonna put enough that that could happen. Whoa, that's a lot. Now we'll place these somewhere warm and sunny on a windowsill or back porch, somewhere that will maintain heat and the sun can hit them directly. You can already see the hibiscus, the cochineal, the osage orange, and somewhat the matter root is beginning to bleed into the water and into the fiber. And you can start to tell that there's going to be some sort of fiber color reaction happening here. So allow these to sit in the sun for a couple days up to a couple weeks and you can check on them. You can give the jars a shake every couple days or once a day to start to rotate the fiber around with the dye material to try to get a more even dye color or just allow it to sit randomly the way it is and you'll get more of a speckled effect where wherever the dye material sits there will be a darker tone in that area. Once you've rinsed your fibers and yarns from the solar dyeing, you will allow them to dry. And there will probably be bits of the dye stuff stuck in the wool, especially, though you will probably find some in the yarn as well. Because the dye material that we used 
really likes to stick in the fiber. So allow it to fully dry and then you can shake it out and the particles of the dye stuff will shake out pretty easily. The wood pieces on the Osage Orange I just picked out and you can still see a little bit in here, here and there. As soon as it's fully dry, that's still a little bit damp, I'll go outside and shake it out and get the rest of the bits to come out. So I'm really pleased by the colors that these produced. The Osage Orange ended up super bright and vibrant. The Matter Root is pretty variegated because of how the dye stuff and the fibers, how I put them into the jar. So you can see dark patches and then lighter patches on both the yarn and the fiber. And then the cochineal ended up very bright. I was expecting more of a pink, but this scarlet red is absolutely gorgeous. And then kind of a um, raspberry pink on the wool. And then the hibiscus ended up a little bit faded. So it almost is a mauve color, which is really fun. And these all mesh together really well. I like how the combination works out really well. If you see the yarns side by side, it ends up just kind of being a fun, fun color palette. Nature is full of beautiful color palettes. And when you do natural dyeing, you find that in your fibers and yarns as well. These work really well together. They would make a really cool project pulling the different colors in almost like a tropical sunset or something. The colors are super vibrant and rich. Check out my other video on solar dyeing with grocery produce right up here. Give this video a like if you enjoy solar dyeing and want to see more natural dyeing videos here on this channel. Thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe to get updates on new videos that come out. And thanks for solar dyeing with me. See you next time.